Perennial food crops are great to have in the garden. Once established, they provide food year after year with minimal effort. They also typically require fewer resources like fertilizer and water because their deeper root systems give them access to nutrients and water that annuals can't reach. For the most part, all we do for our perennials is apply compost and mulch once per year and compost tea every week or so during the late spring and summer. Though we already grow a number of perennial food crops in the garden, one of our goals for next year is to grow even more, especially more perennial vegetables and herbs. Many perennial vegetables tolerate shade or partial shade, are ready to harvest earlier in the growing season, and produce higher yields than annuals. So I thought I'd share with you some of the perennial vegetables and herbs we're considering adding to our garden next year here in the Chicago area. Also, if you'd like to share what perennial vegetables and herbs you grow in your area, please leave a comment and I'll compile a list of everyone's input in the description below. Out of all the perennial vegetables, I'm most excited about growing tree collards. Like many of you, I first learned about tree collards from John Kohler's Growing Your Greens channel. No one has done more than John to promote this amazing perennial green. Collards are rich in calcium, vitamins B1, B2, B9, and C, and beta-carotene. They also contain nutrients that promote antiviral, antibacterial, and anti-cancer activity. I was so excited about growing tree collards that I've already purchased cuttings from bountifulgardens.org. The cuttings weren't cheap, $15 plus shipping for three cuttings. But tree collards are perennial, and can easily be propagated from cuttings, so we should have a lifetime supply of collards, which is well worth the investment. All I had to do to get the cutting started was to clip off a little from the bottom of each cutting and place them in the soil with half the nodes above and half the nodes below the soil, and of course keep them watered. They've only been in the soil for a few days now, so they aren't showing any growth yet but I'm hopeful they'll do well under the grow lights until they can be moved to the garden in the spring. Tree collars tolerate partial shade, which is perfect for our shady garden. They're perennial in zones 8 through 10 here in the U.S. Because we live in zone 5, we'll be growing our tree collars in large pots and bringing them indoors for the winter. Another perennial green we'd like to grow is sea kale, which is rich in potassium and vitamin C and is considered a gourmet vegetable. It has blue-green leaves and flowers that attract beneficial insects. It's a perennial in zone six and above, but should survive the winter here in zone five with protection. Mulch and a polytunnel should do the trick. These rare seeds are available at bountifulgardens.org. We grew French sorrel years ago and really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I accidentally killed the plant with my overenthusiastic mulching but we're ready to give it another try, and this time I'll go easy on the mulch. French sorrel is a perennial in zones 4 to 9, and tolerates partial shade. It starts producing early in the spring, and its lemony leaves are great in salads and soups. French sorrel seeds are available from a number of suppliers, but we'll be buying ours from bountifulgardens.org, since they have so many of the perennial vegetable seeds that we're looking for. The last of the perennial greens we are considering is Good King Henry. This green is rich in calcium and vitamins A and C. Both its greens and flowers are edible, and the greens make a great substitute for spinach. It is perennial in zones 5 to 9, but might need some protection in the winter in zone 5. Once again, we'll be buying the seeds from bountifulgardens.org. We're also thinking about growing Jerusalem artichokes, which are also known as sunchokes. This plant is a type of sunflower that produces edible tubers. It grows just about anywhere here in the U.S., but is better adapted to the northern two-thirds of the country. These tubers can be eaten like potatoes and make a great potato substitute for diabetics because they contain inulin instead of starch. They can also be eaten raw in salads. I'm not sure where we'll buy the tubers, but we may just pick them up at our local Whole Foods and plant them early in the spring. Asparagus is probably the best known of the perennial vegetables. Though we like it a lot, we've never grown it, probably because we didn't like the idea of waiting two or three years for the first harvest. Once established, however, asparagus plants are productive for years, so we're considering planting asparagus in our garden. Asparagus is perennial in zones 3 to 8, 
We'll probably get our seeds from bountifulgardens.org. Rhubarb is a perennial vegetable that is very well suited for our garden. It does best in areas like ours, where the ground freezes in the winter, and it prefers light shade, which we have in abundance. This low-maintenance plant produces edible stalks that are great in pies and jams, but its leaves are poisonous and cannot be eaten. The stalks can be harvested in the plant's second year. You can get the seeds from a number of suppliers, but we'll probably go with bountifulgardens.org because they have seeds for almost all of the perennial vegetables that we want to grow. The one perennial herb we're thinking about adding to the garden is lovage. It can be eaten as a celery-like vegetable or like parsley and is great in soups, gravies, and sauces. Lovage is a perennial in zones 4 through 9 and prefers full sun. Once again, we'll probably get the seeds from bountifulgardens.org. By adding more perennial vegetables and herbs to our garden, we're hoping to produce more food with less effort. In addition, many of the crops emerge earlier in the spring than most annuals, and the Jerusalem artichokes can be harvested even in winter, which provides a natural low-effort form of season extension. As I mentioned earlier, please leave a comment below if you'd like to share what perennial vegetables and herbs you grow in your garden. I'll put a list together in the description for everyone to benefit from. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.